Hi friends, hello the world. Welcome back to this episode of Tools for Transitioning Humanitarians and your host, the Salam Manua. Um, and today, <laughs> sorry, I was just looking at my hair, how it is. Uh, today, I want to talk about how to overcome one of the biggest obstacles that we face, whatever that is. So I will give you uh, examples of two clients who is in the humanitarian sector and in the business. And then I will talk about their obstacles and then how we are solving to overcome them and uh, something that might be very useful for you to move forward when you feel like, oh my God, this is the biggest obstacle. I don't really believe I can solve it or overcome it. Therefore, I don't transition, right? So the, a lot of the humanitarians, they feel like their biggest obstacle is um, money or their biggest obstacle is not knowing what to do or a uh, biggest obstacle is afraid of failing and therefore they just feel like they can't really move forward. And therefore, how are we solving this? Uh, whatever the biggest obstacle is, how are the way we're solving it and how you could also apply this to yourself? So um, let me give you a bit of a background of my clients that I'm working with. There's two clients that I mentioned. One is in the humanitarian sector, and she uh, got assigned. She got an assignment of big, uh, being a P4. She's now in P3, um, even though she's temporarily uh, performing a P4 position, but she really feels like uh, going to a P4 position where she had been. Um, appointed and uh, and it's uh, I think two year uh, assignment and she feels great about that and she's wanting to go and do that but uh, she feels like oh my god this is like a very responsible job or uh, I really feel like I need to grow into it but I just feel like there will be a lot of challenges and I feel what if I cannot manage it what if I cannot do this da, 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 all of these things right so that is um, the one scenario where uh, her background feels like she still feels like she's a P3 uh, level. And uh, even though she has done the P4 uh, temporary assignments and now she's going for a P4 and um, she feels like there might be a lot of challenges to overcome and uh, how to do this, right? And one of the ways that I was uh, challenging her mindset, right, around, okay, if you were a P5 person now, how would you be solving this problems that you may face at P4 level, right? If you imagine yourself being a P5 uh, person, how would you contribute at workplace? How would you uh, spend your time? How would you um, create the impact? How would you talk to partners and uh, your supervisor and other people, uh, right? How would you communicate? How would you stand by uh, all the things that you are saying? Um, uh, what uh, rooms that you will be mostly speaking about and how you will be um, performing, how it will be you will be solving problems, right? And when we started talking about this, she started realizing that, oh my God, I actually want to be at very high level discussions about the future of the organization, about the operations. Uh, I want to be discussing um, the staffing issues. I want to be discussing um, the impact that we're making, right? And I want to be discussing about how uh, all of this uh, political situations in the US is going to affect the organization. I want to talk about that. And, and then I was getting her to really think about, okay, how do I contribute at the five level to the um, policy level discussions, to the, uh, the, the drafting or uh, discussing and putting together a policy documents? How do you want to contribute in that environment, right? Uh, what perspective do you want to bring to and how would you communicate that to others? And then she started talking more about if I were P5, this is how I would show up. This is how I would contribute. This is where I would focus. This is where I would see my most value added. And when we start talking about that, at that level, then P4 problems sound like, oh, that's not that difficult, actually. Right, that's not that difficult to solve because I'm already imagining myself and feeling like a P5 already. Therefore, obviously, I know how to solve the P4 problems because 
the only reason why I've gotten to the P5 level is because I have done and successfully completed the P4 position. So obviously I can do that, right? So therefore it becomes such a doable thing. And then we feel like we can solve these problems from this a lot higher perspective of ourselves rather than trying to solve the P4 problems from a P3 level. Do you see the difference? And I really wanted her to really get clear for herself of the differences of how she feels when she's a P3 level, how she feels or she would feel when she's now going to P4 level, right? What are the ways where she feels like there will be a problem or what problems she believes will be challenging for her, overwhelmed for her? And then looking at what would be the P5 level her and how she would be solving these P4 problems, right? So this is, if it becomes a bit abstract, don't worry, I will now use an tangible example of another client and then we will solve the problems as well in that way. But I was just thinking, for instance, in at the P4 level for her, um, managing a team, um, it will be a very high level emergency situation uh, going to post emergency, right? And therefore, um, where will be will she be focusing on? Probably there will be a lot of things that she like her team want her to react to things. And then as soon as she finds herself to reacting to things, she also needs to realize that, okay, I cannot just keep reacting to things because if I do, then I'm not going to be able to do all the other things. So I can't be firefighting the whole time. Therefore, uh, when I observe initially all the things of what's happening and where the firefighting is happening most of the time, now my job as a P4 is how to solve those firefighting uh, holes so that my attention does not go to firefighting anymore, but rather going into um, discussing the advocacy, discussing the uh, the the major topics that affect a lot of um, uh, refugees, displaced people, and all of those people that we're serving, right? So therefore, her job then will be mostly focusing on the major topics um, and advocating for them because she will be a protection. Um, and then at P5 level, right, if we look at all of those problems from P5 level, then she will feel like, okay, I know how to advocate. I know how to focus on the systemic issues. I know how to uh, uh, consistently uh, pursue certain topics so that um, the people that we're serving get the benefit, the most benefits, as well as my team does not feel like overstretched and stressed out to be doing this work, right? So you can see that uh, from the P5 perspective, solving P4 problems become like, I know what I'm doing. I know how to solve. I have an overview of things and I can see here are the uh, problems that I need to be focusing on. Here are the um, firefighting that I don't need to do that. Maybe there will be always something like come up, but at least the major or regular firefighting, we're not going to do that, right? Or because we have solved that. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's how we start solving it. Now, let me give you an exa another example that may be even more tangible when it comes to business. And this is the business that um, of a client that we're working on is the half a million dollar business. And uh, we're um, getting her to set up all the systems in place so that we are getting her to half a million and then uh, two million, right? And one of the things that uh, my client is struggling with is the time, right? Time allocation being, um, and she feels like she's actually uh, better at failing, but we're working on the failing part as well. But the major problem that she's having is the time allocation. Now, we are getting her, like, I'm asking her to imagine already having done the um, half a million dollar business and already someone who is who has been running half a million dollar business for some time, how is she, right? How is she, excuse me, in that position? And then one of the things that we realize is that as, as a CEO of a half a million, excuse me, dollar company, 
she doesn't really have a time problem anymore, meaning that she doesn't really feel like, okay, like feeling scattered and dispersed of uh, this is happening here, this is happening here, and this is happening here, and all of this all over the place. She does not really see herself that way anymore. In other words, she's not really dispersed all over the place, and her reporting and her like taxes, all of the numbers and all of these things are not all over the place, but rather they're all in one place, in one system, and everything works like a, like a clock kind of, right? So she has, because she does a physical product and selling physical product, and therefore she has people who distribute, she, she has people who are in charge of the warehouse and all of these things. And therefore, as the uh, CEO of a half a million uh, dollar company, she has a system and um, and that system works where um, like the warehouse people uh, do the certain reporting uh, like using an app in her case, because that's what we're introducing, right? Using an app so that uh, they can uh, enter things into the app and then the people who are taking the products and distributing, they then uh, put it into the app and then everything is calculated automatically and then she is there to look overview of what's happening and then her job then is because she doesn't spend all of this time uh feeling like a secretary feeling like um a ceo and feeling like a marketer and all of these different hats instead of like being so all over the place she's very uh, concentrated on these are the numbers that we're seeing and then um, my job now is to increase the marketing here. And therefore, these are the, uh, the ABC tasks that I need to do to increase the marketing. Uh, here are the delivery that's a problem or here are the product that's a problem. Okay, this is how I will be solving it. Or these are the people who are solving it, right? So it becomes like, a, like an orchestra. Right. So orchestra that uh, everyone knows their own jobs. Right. And the role of the director of the orchestra is then guide them through so that they all have the harmonious way of performing. And then um, the if the uh, sound is uh, more here than uh, calming that sound, this is what I imagine the director of the orchestra does. <laughs> Right. So therefore, that's what I'm really wanting her to get that system in place. And and she was also talking about uh, there is already a obviously um, a platform or the systems, the, the accountant system that uh, is available for her business. That will be very good. And then now we're launching that business and also embodying being the person who no longer has the time issue, who no longer is overwhelmed with time who no longer feels like oh I don't know how to manage my time and how to run here and run there but rather knows what is important where she can focus on what are the things that she doesn't need to focus on and hand it over to other people in her team so that she is able to uh, scale to the half a million dollars so that she can then know how to scale to a million as well right so this all of this work is possible once she start realizing and seeing herself as someone who no longer has the time issue as an issue because she has already like imagined herself being the ceo of a half a million dollar company for some time and therefore she imagines that she's already someone who knows how to manage her time who knows how to not waste her time who knows how to not be dispersed all over the place and who knows that um, there there needs to be a certain system in place, especially when you are uh, launching product and um, branding a product and uh, working on it. And also with team, then therefore everything needs to be like working in their own ways um, in as a, as a part of a system in a structured way so that she no longer does not have that overwhelm. Right now, the other thing that we were working with her uh, is um, uh, like processing and um, uh, overcoming the fa failure problem, right? And she had uh, several ways that she failed a lot in her business and uh, and she felt like a lot of people were in her family were judging or in the family of the husband were judging her and she felt so... Um, 
like I don't really want to do this and I uh, I'm just so afraid and next time if I fail everyone's gonna look at me and like laugh at me and if I fail at half a million dollar and at a million dollar uh, business then uh, the failure will feel a lot harder a lot more right and therefore I just feel like I can't handle it right so again we are getting hard to think about someone who's already running a million dollar business what will be their way of handling failure and not only what will be their way of handling failure I would even think about I like I was asking her um, what kind of failure do you believe at the million dollar you will be experiencing and and I think it would be like very um, weird and immature to think oh it will not be that bad uh, it will be millions uh, of dollars anyway and I will be fine I will get through this somehow everything works right because I think that type of mindset unfortunately oftentimes gets us so surprised and unprepared for possible failures which will happen in any type of transitioning in any type of growth in any type of scaling right so one of them failures that she would perceive as so much failure is when her family members or outside people are um, uh, like um, making fun of her or judging her or criticizing her all of this are very possibility right and if you have an online business that's also a possibility that there will be a lot of people who are not liking you or who are hating you whatever it is now how do we like handle those type of failures and the other one is when we lose a lot of money as a business owner how do we um, handle those failures right and I was talking to her about if you are someone who has already um, built a million dollar business and she has done this she knows how to do this she has done this before then how would she react to such type of failures right how would she react to um, losing a lot of money or how would she react to um, handling judgment from other people criticism from other people and then one of the things that we realize is that because we have experienced it so many times now, and we also know how to process those emotions and how to um, know that we grow through that process most of the time. And if we don't quit and if we don't just like give up, then we are going to grow so much more than how can we use those occasions to feel like, okay, what are the ways that I can grow? And what are the ways that I can use this as a way to say that, okay, next time when this happens, this is how I take care of myself. This is how I um, process all of these emotions. This is how I like um, tell myself that I'm not going to give up because this is an opportunity to feel even more resilient, even better, even more um, like we confirm and embrace more of who we are uh in mm, the, how do i say uh, accept and um and be grateful of who we are being in those difficult situations and continue growing uh and feeling so grateful for keep doing that that's what we want to focus on rather than taking those failures as a way to say that means i shouldn't have done this um, why am I doing this? What's the point? And if we go into that spiral, then it's going to be very difficult to come out of that, right? So that's why when we are making a business at the half a million at a million dollar level, those are the the focus is going to be on not uh, let's try not to fail. And of course, we will do that anyway. But if we do fail, or if we feel like we're failing, our job is then how can I embrace my um, self concept even more? How can I uh, be grateful for I'm going through this anyway, even if it's very hard? How can I uh, accept myself and grow myself even more? And learn from all of this uh, feedback that I'm getting so that next time when this happens, I'm not going to be this affected this way, this level or this intensity. And the way that we know how to do that is when we imagine when we are a million dollar self, 
then we feel, okay, this type of things, we have done it. We know how to go through this. We know how to not give up. We know how to uh, embrace ourselves and accept ourselves even more and um, confirm to ourselves even more how we have done the impossible that our brain believed at some point was impossible. We have done that. Now we're experiencing next level problems and that's how it's supposed to be. Right. So that's why, as you can see, that whatever the biggest problem that we believe uh, that may happen and we're afraid of it, if we put ourselves in the position or in the shoes of our version who is already who has been doing that for some time, whatever that version is, whether it's at P5 level, whether it's at director level, whether it's a representative level, or if you are going to the private sector, whether it's at um, half a million level, at a million level, or even more, when we have been in that role for some time and we know how to do that, then from that role, how would we see these problems and how would we solve them rather than trying to solve it from our current uh, emotional state or our current fear state, our current trust state, because our current level of um, trust state may not be as expansive as high when we are from that state, right? So therefore, doing this from uh, the level or the version of ourselves who has already done that, who has been doing this for so long, how would that person look at this and say, ah, oh, I have been there. I know how to do this. I know how to solve it because it happened to me before. I've done it this way. I've solved it this way. And we're going to be okay, basically. And this is part of doing business. This is part of growing. This is part of becoming a P5 or P4, a D1. This is just part of it. And um, let's get through this in the way that is least damaging to ourselves, but most growing for ourselves. Okay, my dears, if you would like to work on this and become the version of yourself that uh, solves whatever the most difficult problems with ease, then absolutely come coach with me. I would love to help you get to the place where you're like, yes, I know how to do this. I've done this. Yes, it stings, but I also know how to go through this. And then having more of a develop more of the emotional intelligence and maturity and grow even further. Have a beautiful week and I'll talk to you very soon.